Welcome back. We are looking ahead of the supplementary elections, which is scheduled to hold in some of the states tomorrow. And the other states, we don't know until the courts decide. Uh, but, Mr. Yukomi, let me come, come back to you on this. Our correspondent in uh, uh, Bauchi did raise uh, an observation. Well, she said the people in Bauchi are actually wondering how is it that uh, INEC, how did INEC come to the conclusion that there will be supplementary elections for the governorship? when the results have not been announced? Well, um, the issue of Bauchi is very clear and it's uh, very, very unfortunate. If you follow the story, uh, the Tafa Balewa local government was where the problem is. And I think that's the, the largest, that's where I, I suspect you have the highest number of voters. And uh, when you disrupt INEX process, there are consequences. And there is no way we can declare results if uh, the parameters have not been met. You know, uh, these are legal issues. Uh, everything INEC does is based on the rule of law, on the Constitution and the Electoral Act, and we cannot go against it. So if we have, even if, for instance, we are conducting an election where you have 20 local governments and we have 19, right, we cannot declare until we have the last one, you know, because that last one could have an effect on, 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 on the others. That's exactly what happened in Bauchi. And we are saying that, well, if uh, that was what happened, and we, we have seen uh, uh, the, the, the left and right of it, the, the best thing is to go in and conduct that election. Unfortunately, we had this court issue, and we are trying to, to deal with it. Okay, Bob, Mr. Ikemi, uh, again, share some light on this, because before the court issue came up, uh, because just as INEC did in several other states where they'll be having the supplementary elections now, uh, they had collated, they announced the results they had at the time, and when they saw that they had them met with certain criteria, including the ones that had disruptions, then they fixed supplementary elections. But then the Bochi people are saying, look, okay, look, how do we, they don't even know what figures are located to what and what's going on. So, if Anna can say, okay, look, this is the result we had at the time, then upon which was why we then declared that there will be supplementary election. Would that have been out of place? No, you see, when we hold elections, uh, there are processes. At the polling unit level, for instance, we have a process of declaring results and the, poli and the party agents are there. Now, when all other results have been, have been collated and we, we now want to announce the, the entire results. If one is missing or if there are problems somewhere and the problem is likely to have a significant effect on the overall results, we cannot declare. For instance, politicians know that if they are weak somewhere, uh, uh, they will go and disrupt the process in that place and leave their strongholds so that they will have a conclusive election. That is what is going on. But you see, the, the, the point for me, which I want the media to focus on, is that where you don't have external interference with our process, we declare. You know, before the presidential election, we, are, we conducted 195 different types of elections, including seven governorship elections, which are off-season. And where he didn't interfere, we declared, you know, with everything meeting the parameters and the threshold for declaring such elections. So, if you want to interrogate why we, did, why we didn't declare, we can explain those things. And the thing is, well, if, if, for instance, the margin of lead principle has not been effectively taken care of, uh, where you have uh, some, some areas where you cannot vote or you have more council votes, and the margin of lead is less than a uh, number, uh, number of registered voters, we cannot declare. Uh, I know this is a, a, a huge source of concern, I reckon, for INEC as well, where external interference in areas where, you know, may not be stronghold of politicians. I imagine that the Commission may have been thinking about this. What can you tell us, maybe both in terms of the short-term solution and perhaps a long-term solution to this challenge that we've got? Thank you very much. Um, the responsibility of securing the environment is that of uh, the police as a lead agency assisted by other security agencies. And uh, we have a platform uh, where we discuss uh, issues of election security on a quarterly basis. 
and honestly, uh, we, we hold frank discussions. And uh, the last three we've had, uh, the IG has been present. And the last one that was held uh, a couple of, uh, some few days ago, uh, this issue was stressed. Because you see, if you look at the polling unit uh, uh, scenario, you have probably three to five INEC officials trying to conduct all aspects of the election. Uh, they are busy attending to people, the smart card reader, uh, register of voters, uh, issuing out ballot papers, and, and you know, making sure things go right. Uh, the uh, security agencies that are there between two and three that are not armed are also in the place. But uh, the, the good thing is that the police know this country very well. They carry out risk, risk assessment. The, the IG told us that the, the police carried out risk assessment all over the country and they're able to map, map out strategies. Uh, I think that to a large extent the strategy worked, but obviously in some areas it didn't work as much much as, as it should, and I cannot speak for the police on such things. We are deeply concerned because we don't prepare for supplementary elections. In other words, when we are preparing for election, we don't have it at the back of our mind that we must have supplementary. We pray we don't. Our mind is, let us conclude this election at first ballot. It's more expensive for the country, and it is your money, our money, that is being spent on these extra activities that we are doing. And we can put that money to proper use in other areas that, of course, the areas of need. So when you have a disruption, it, it affects not just INEC, it affects the country because it is the federal government's money, it is this country's money that is being spent on those extra things. You know, I, I, I know that in uh, 1999, 2003, uh, perhaps 2007, before we had some amendments, 2010 and beyond, some of these matters also popped up at the time. But when INEC then said after the amendment that if elections are disrupted in a particular area, it will be continued either the next day or thereabouts. So those kinds of provisions, did they achieve any results? Would it be good to improve upon them? Thank you very much. You see, the, the idea is that we want to discourage politicians from having this thought that they could go and disrupt elections. Of course, when you disrupt election, we go back and conclude the process and the desired result will still come out. So it's like you are wasting your time. It has happened in a number of places. And because that is uh, available, because that is very clear to them, I think it has discouraged quite a lot of them from interfering with the process. But we still have those who still believe that they can interfere with the process and get away with it. And INEC is determined. It's a big, it's a huge challenge that we face. And I want Nigerians to appreciate that. Uh, when people blame INEC, they also need to appreciate the constraints that we have and the efforts we are putting into this. We are doing quite a lot. We are determined to make vote count. But there are people who want to subvert the process. We make plans. We put these plans before our stakeholders. Unfortunately, some people go and, and do some strategy on how to, you know, you know, make sure that those plans don't work. So it's a cut and mouse game, but we, we are focused. We will not be discouraged. Do you consider, uh, Mr. Yekomi, do you consider the actions in Bochi State where uh, an ex parte order was given to stop the results announcement, do you consider that as an interference? Well, um, I, because the case is in court, uh, I don't want to comment because it will be subjudiced. Uh, I think that we just allow the, the process to run the full course. And after the judgment has been given, we can then talk about uh, those things. And then again, uh, with con concerns to um, how the, the outcomes are, are with us, as we have and with you, I can imagine, uh, for, uh, being the lead in the organization of these elections, how does it uh, come to you when you have to deal with situations in Sokoto, for instance, when um, uh, the, the people largely asking INEC to make clarifications on whether or not uh, the already counted votes will count again since you're going for a supplementary elections? Well, the, if, if elections, uh, if you're going to have supplementary elections and if you have 
some results already declared. We can't tamper with those results. Those results are there permanently. It is the areas where declarations could not be made or where the results are not available that we are going to deal with. And I think that the resident electoral commissioner will have explained this to the stakeholders, uh, the political parties that participated and major stakeholders on what the commission intends to do. You, know, you, cannot, you cannot pass an examination twice. Once you pass an exam, you don't go and write it again. So the areas where results were declared, we are not tampering with those results. The areas where we are going to conduct uh, election, uh, whichever way you want to call it, are those areas where declarations were not made or where uh, there, there, there were cancellations. What's the latest thinking about malfunctioning or non-usage of the smart card readers this time around? Well, we have a rule. The smart card reader must be used in all polling units. Uh, because when you come to the polling unit with your permanent voter's card, you have to go through the protocols uh, to using the smart card reader. First, it has to establish that the smart card reader was issued by INEC. It, it also authenticates you uh, by ensuring that you are actually the person that has pre uh, presented the smart card reader, uh, presented the permanent voter's card, and then you go to the biometrics. But if you willingly refuse to go through that, your vote will be scored as zero. And, you know, when people talk of malfunction, it, it, it's something that the, the, the rate of malfunctioning is, is, is quite low from experience. Uh, and then we have backup teams. We have what we call uh, redundant uh, uh, smart card readers. Now, when a smart card reader malfunctions or is not able to function properly, we, we bring in a replacement. And it is on rare occasions that you have total failure of the smart card reader. And of course, if that happens, in the unlikely event that that happens, uh, the uh, presiding officer will now you know, stop the election and, and continue the following day, by which time um, the arrangements will have been put in place uh, for the process to continue. Uh, Mr. Rutimi, you become the Chief Press Secretary to the Chairman of ANEC. We appreciate you talking to us today on the program. Thank you for having me.